Thank you, Alan. Thanks uh, to the bid for having us. We appreciate you guys taking time to hear our presentation. Uh, as she said, we're with NASA Services, which is the public franchise service provider for downtown LA. Uh, up until July of last year, the city of LA was what was known as an open franchise, an open market, kind of the wild west of wage calling. You could call up pretty much any company you wanted and bid out service. Uh, it was great for negotiating the best price, but there were a lot of limitations that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, the city, just some background on it, the city calls this a public-private partnership. They wanted to meet the state's goals of waste reduction to landfills, and the only way to do that was to enter into exclusive service agreements with local haulers. They call it a public-private partnership because we are acting as an extension of the city of LA sanitation. So even, you guys notice the trucks are all co-branded. They say Recicla, which is the name of the program, and they say NASA Services, which is the name of the service provider in downtown uh, LA. I know for a lot of, the perspective of a lot of business owners, it was a challenging transition because you went from being able to call whoever you wanted, negotiate the best price, negotiate the best services, that you felt you could get to being told, okay, I know you've used, it, it went both directions. We got it, we got phone calls saying, we used this hauler for 20 years, now we're stuck with you. And the flip side we got, we used you for 20 years, now we're stuck with them, what can we do? So we know there was a lot of challenges, the media was not a, not a pretty picture, so I'm not gonna pretend like it was a perfect transition. But what we did in the South Park area, this is what was in our zone two, which means that in August of last year, uh, a, a, a zero waste specialist, one of one of our team, should have visited your business. And the way the city does has the ordinance, it says that you need to provide a minimum level of trash service to meet the business's entire needs. Uh, depending on the nature of the property manager or business owner, uh, some some property managers provide the service for their for their tenants. Others require them to get their own service. So everyone in here should have received what's called a waste assessment. If you did not, it's because maybe it was someone else in your company or your property manager that was supposed to go over that, or was doing it on behalf of your business. Uh, so what, as I was mentioning, what they wanted to do is they wanted to create this franchise system to meet the state's waste reduction goals. Uh, when all the haulers bid on these accounts, we were bidding on 60,000 commercial accounts. So a commercial account is any business or a multifamily with five or more units. Now the transition is over, we're somewhere between 70 and 80,000 accounts because a lot of the haulers were under-reporting their, their numbers, they're just not even permitted, not reporting at all. In the case of NASA services, when we bid on the contract, we bid on 1,900 commercial accounts in downtown LA. Uh, we're up to about 2,400 signed accounts and we've identified approximately 100 more accounts that are still being serviced by unpermitted haulers. So if your business is not being serviced by NASA Services, we'll be happy to help you out with that. Uh, some of the benefits of the program was uh, more efficient routes. As many of you know from being in downtown, pretty much all day long you would see garbage trucks from every company servicing your block, just everywhere. By being able to streamline uh, the routes, there's only one service provider in your area, so these guys start work at 2 o'clock in the morning, they're in downtown, they're pretty much done by 11. So we've already seen a reduction in truck traffic on the road and hopefully congestion from your guys, from the perspective of the business owners and residents. The city required natural gas vehicles for the entire fleet. Many of the haulers, uh, now this actually kind of speaks to the, the rates, because I know they're, I'm trying to anticipate there might be questions related to the rates. They're requiring the, tr the drivers to have to pay the or requiring the haulers to pay the prevailing wage for the service providers. So whether you're a union shop or not, you have to pay the union wage with benefits to your 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 waste collectors, which creates a safer environment, a little more equitable environment for them. Uh, made recycling mandatory, so they they use the cost of the trash service to subsidize recycling. So the reason why the price is higher than it probably was before is because recycling is now bundled with the price of service. Um, they required, as I mentioned, the cleaner burning trucks. The typical garbage truck that meets the uh, CNG natural gas standards is about $350,000. Um, there were, I don't know how many, how many garbage trucks there were in the city, 
before we see glove, but we're at about 350 uh, waste contracts just citywide, and there's about 25 in service downtown LA every day. Uh, a big part of it was the transparent pricing. Uh, it used to be that you could just, you had, there was no clear cut, and this goes back maybe to that reporting standpoint, there was no clear cut rates, which means that the, the little guy, the small business, was not able to negotiate the same prices as a larger business. The city wanted to make it completely equitable and transparent by saying, these are the rates for your level of service. And they also, as you can imagine from a reporting standpoint, if you're, if you're, if you're collecting data from 45 permitted haulers and about 100 unpermitted haulers, it's way hard to get, it's very difficult to get accurate information. Now they are collecting franchise fees, they're collecting data, they're collecting information from only seven, seven service providers. So from a reporting standpoint, from a transparency standpoint, the numbers are a lot better. Uh, what we offer is a waste assessment for your business. If you haven't already received one or you're not sure if you received one, we're more than happy to set up an appointment to have a zero waste specialist meet with you. We are required to once every six months come back to the account and do an updated assessment where we determine whether there are opportunities for you to expand your recycling program, maybe add a food donation program, add a composting program, that sort of thing. We do trainings. Uh, we can do, just very easily, we can do English, Spanish, uh, and Farsi with your employees. We can meet with your janitorial staff. We can meet, if you, if you manage a building that has multiple tenants, we can meet with individual tenants, even if they're not the one who has the account. We can still meet with them and make recommendations on how to add a recycling program. We can also provide a list of the accepted materials in the recycling program and composting program. Uh, we have partnerships now with electronic waste recyclers, uh, with food donators, uh, acceptors of edible food. If you have a business or a restaurant that generates excess surplus food, the city of LA and the county of LA have made it very clear what you can do to donate food without being held like liable if someone were to get sick. They're trying to make it as transparent, as clear cut as possible, and we really are here to help. Uh, all the service providers, the seven providers have, are on, we're about to finish our first year of a 10 year contract. And I don't want you to think that just because it's an exclusive franchise doesn't mean we're not here to help. We do have waste reduction goals that we have to meet. Otherwise the, the hauler is subjected to liquid damages. They are required, like I said, to make us available to come to your business and speak with you. And just to give you an idea, right now we have about 20 trash truck routes we have three full-time recycle routes six days a week. Uh, we have two food waste organics routes six days a week, and we have a yard waste route because there are some, mostly for the, the like on San Pedro Street where the flower district is to get a lot of the excess flowers. And uh, this first year is just like a baseline year, so we're just we're, we're, we're putting our overall generation, but we're supposed to show a reduction to landfill of 10% a year for the next 10 years, which is obviously a very tall order. Uh, we're currently at about 40% diversion from landfill, which is, I believe, a huge improvement from before, but since we didn't really have accurate reporting, it's hard to really tell what happened before, which is why the city was using this as a base year. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, I'd be more than happy to see what I can do. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, I live at the Skyline Condominium Complex, which is nice and flower. It's a large building, 200 units between Flower and uh, Hulk Street. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had first-hand experience with NASA um, not following the noise ordinance. They kind of pick up whenever they please. I guess you have a schedule, obviously, but um, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you could go to your superiors and get them to investigate the times of the pickup because you have the watermark uh, building on Flower and Ninth. You have a new building that's uh, opening up across the street from them. Another new building at uh, Hope and Eighth. And I've had to write letters. I've had to write emails, phone calls, and spend a lot of time trying to get. I don't have any power, but just asking them politely, could you please? follow the noise ordinance at least because there's a lot of people living here and it's not pleasant being woken up um, you know Monday to Sunday yep. 
uh, at you know five o'clock in the morning or, or even earlier. So if you could look into that, I'd really appreciate that. Absolutely. And what's, solve it. What's the address on that one? It's 600 West 9th Street. Yeah. One of the benefits of having an exclusive provider is we were able to be in downtown starting, literally, the guys start working, our office is in Montebello, the, where, uh, the lot, the yard is in Montebello. They're here at 2 a.m., which is, from a traffic standpoint, from an efficiency of routing standpoint, is fantastic, but we are supposed to be with not within 500 feet of multifamily before 6 a.m., so exactly. I apologize for that. No, it's okay. Uh, I mean, you're... it's just uh, something that I, I discovered, but I can, yeah. and I've managed through all these emails and this dialogue to sort of, I guess, solve the problem to an extent. It's in front of our building with Panini and, and mm -hmm. so on, but I can still hear in the wee hours of the morning the, the pickup going on at the Watermark, for example. And uh, I mean, I'm not going to police the neighborhood and say, you know, put my picket sign, but I'd like you to try and bring, address that and get that solved if you could. I will, if I can do, I appreciate you. Can you write 1155 somewhere in that list? <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 You had mentioned that every six months you're um, able to come to more, you know, each of your accounts. Um, I think the, the three reasons that you listed were for all to add programs, um, like for example, composting. At this point, is and we've tried to negotiate, I think, um, and I speak for a couple of buildings in downtown, but sure. at this point, is there any more negotiability in terms of reducing the price, or are we all at minimum pricing right now? Uh, the city's the best price. The city, it's the the, the, right, the the city negotiated the rates on your behalf. Uh, and what we can do though is work with you to try and make sure you have the proper level of services. Okay. A lot of businesses have subscribed and they've always just had six day service. Well, maybe they only need five day service or four day service. Or it's really, it's really the same day. It's really the same service. You just increase the rate service. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of differences in the programming. Which no, I, I, I don't really about. think so. I think it's pretty much the same service that the city that the city negotiated with you to raise it every six months. And do you guys have any idea where that twenty five plus million dollars that you've all paid into the city goes to and what programs are being used for? Uh, I'm not familiar with what you're that we're referring to, but well, I can tell you made, that in order for the city to do this, the city generated a tremendous amount of income from you guys, yeah. which allowed you guys to raise the rates to people who are paying for the services. Well, as I mentioned, the rates were set to cut the factor in having to purchase the new fleet of trucks, having to make representatives available, having to report more accurate numbers. The city added a whole call center with a few hundred people to field phone calls. The city has quality control people who go in behind us to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I will say that the, the rates have increased, obviously. Um, there are things that I would suggest working with the site, uh, whoever visits your site on, because a lot of things, it's my understanding that location of your bin um, will add or will affect your cost. Uh, you know, if the truck has to reverse down an alley, that's, a, that's an added fee. And so you can kind of get smart around how you're placing your facilities, et cetera, to make accessibility, to increase accessibility so that you're not left with extra charges. Your operations are beyond my. No, our our, our issues really not. We're NASA. Our issues are not really with you because yeah. we're getting the same type of service that we got with waste management. Our issues are primarily with the city that we need to take some more action with the city because we were promised a certain amount of income from a marketing fund because we lost a million dollars based on the switch and we were not consulted as it related to the switch. We now have to abide by your services going up every six months by a certain percentage and yet it doesn't change any of the service we're getting mm -hmm. so there are quite a few issues and i think we've all read about them in the time and i'm not sure they're getting better for residential for commercial or for industries such as ours and i think this is going to become a, a bigger problem for the city moving forward okay well, i'd be happy to have it make an appointment there, there's nothing, i can tell you right happen. now we've talked but there, there's really nothing that you can do mm -hmm because you're bound by the contract that you signed with the city. Mm -hmm. We have no issues with your service, but we do have as an issue with your increase in prices for the same service, and we do our own recycling on site. 
And then we have an issue with the surface of where the city of where the multi millions of dollars go that we're all paying into this based on what we all believe, or a good majority of them believe, is interior service or being deemed for things we never were deemed before. And to put it to it, to cap it, I mean, I think there are quite a few people in downtown Los Angeles who really never had a voice into this program and it was just it was just slammed down our throats. I agree. Just to I mean, I'm not disagreeing with you, but no, I'm sorry you're up here having to do it. No, 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 no. Uh, my, my frustration, but you're having to be my provider and you're on the agenda. You're, you, that, was the, that was the nicest uh, rant. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify one thing, though, the city agreed to an annual rate increase based on the consumer price index. I think it was maybe not the greatest decision to do that six months after rolling out the program because some. Some businesses signed up October, November, December, and then on January 1st, the, it already increased. So we are really, I, just, I do want to know that we, that Krista and I, our team, are here to try to work with businesses to make sure you have the correct level of service and do whatever we can to help you reduce, because reduce, we do have waste reduction goals that we do report and whatnot. So. Yeah, sorry, really quick. So, I mean, I think, you know, obviously the goal is to incentivize people to recycle more. Maybe I'm an isolated incident, I think Krista probably remembers this, but it is actually costing me extra money to recycle because of the trash access fees mm -hmm. that you charge. So I'm paying extra money to recycle. I'm doing it because I think recycling is important, but uh, it's not a huge incentive. I, you know, if I just got trash picked up once a week, I'd be saving probably 100 bucks a month. Uh, I agree. Is that being looked into, or where are we kind of at with that? I've heard different things about specifically recycling and trash access. Uh, yeah, I, I, would, I just want to point out that I don't think that the, the purpose is the transportation or recycling. It's not. Okay. It's not. I think the purpose is um, decreasing landfill. And that's going to come at And so unfortunately, it's been talked about as an incentive to recycle. I don't think that that's actually anything mm -hmm. I believe that none of the none of the seven that are doing this at all any choose to do anything. It's, it's got to be mandated by the city. They're, they're too busy trying to figure out hot dog vendors are not to tackle that. I'll say that. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ellen is, I'll, I'll be I'll in touch with her later and we'll get the appropriate contact info. You guys are welcome to call, email, uh, whatever. If you need us to come, we're going to be coming at some point anyway, but if you want us to come, Sooner, we're more than happy to come to someone, to come to a business that wants to see us. So thank you for, thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Script Identity meeting is on May 9th, so coming up soon. Uh, okay, next up is Josh with the Infrastructure and Planning slash Future of the Mac Bay. So I'm just going to give bullets if you want more details, come up to me afterwards and happy to share more. Um, Pico Station short term improvements are now done. Um, it looks pretty nice. It's like a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so we did it on budget. Uh, we got a management fee and it, it ended up looking pretty nice. So if you're down by the station, please check it out. Um, that's all done. Mike Figueroa, Katie. It's still moving forward. Um, <laughs> it's, all, it's all we really got. Um, Josh will be taking over uh, when I leave. Um, he's already been introduced to one of the construction management meetings. Um, right now, if you've noticed, uh, the work is moving west from Broadway uh, to Figueroa, and they've started the new sidewalk improvements down on Broadway to Hill, and then Hill to Holland. So it'll keep moving down. Um, heads up if you're a stakeholder along Figueroa, there will be repaving of Figueroa. Um, I don't think it's happening this weekend anymore, but it's gonna be happening in the near future. And when it does, every stakeholder will get um, introduced to how it works, how the logistics will happen, how everybody will be accommodated, so heads up. So Katie has been sending out weekly emails, uh, and sometimes more frequently than that, to stakeholders along 11th and Fig that are directly impacted by the work that's going on that week. If you have not been receiving those emails and would like to, please reach out to us and we'll add you to those lists. Um, Josh will be taking over uh, once Katie leaves us. Okay. Yeah, FC grant, uh, we got a grant from Metro. The status is that City Council submitted a motion to accept that money. Uh, it now has to be approved by City Council um, and then we're gonna be setting the meeting. The next sort of issue is whether we have to go out to bid or whether we can go with the consultant that we previously had a proposal from that we prefer to do. So we're still working that out with the city. Uh, and then long-term transit, um, big issue right now is we're trying to get the east-west line included um, or studied as part of the EIR for the West Santa Ana branch. Um, we have a couple meetings um, coming up, including one today, um, to work on that. Maybe reaching out to stakeholders to submit comments to Metro. They're probably coming back with um, some new altered routes um, in the next couple weeks that will be both voted on at the May Metro Board meeting. So um, nothing to reach out to yet, but probably after that comes out, um, we'll be asking for letters of support. I'll prepare everything so it's really easy for you guys. Um, but that's where we are. Okay, those are our updates. Uh, we have a green carpet tonight uh, at Regal Cinemas. $15 special price. Bring your friends. We're seeing the Avengers. Um, and our next board meeting is June 28th. Please mark your calendars. We have a coffee with a cop next month. Um, this is a program that LAPD does all around downtown. Um, we'll, you'll have the opportunity to sit down and chat with Officer Reedy. He's our community officer in the district. Um, has that date been set? Probably, probably May 22nd. But we will confirm that and get that info out to you as soon as possible. And lastly, our infrastructure and planning meeting is June 26th. Uh, all of these notices will go out at the afternoon. Okay, all, thanks so much. Sorry to keep you late. Uh, Robin, sign us up.